An unarmed man heroically confronts an armed one, Kanye West throws liberals into a feeding frenzy, and the Korean War comes to a formal end after decades of standoff. Coming up on Two Day with Two Cents. Hello everyone and welcome back to Two Day with Two Cents on the Liberty Network. Last weekend, a mentally disturbed man who had previously been arrested by the U.S. Secret Service for being in a restricted area at the White House decided to shoot up a Waffle House in Tennessee. Although four people lost their lives, many were saved thanks to the heroic actions of James Shaw Jr., who assaulted the shooter unarmed, getting his rifle away from him before he could commit any more carnage. And from underneath my car, I could see that he stood out in front of the restaurant and shot a few shots through the windows, and then he went inside. And when he went inside, I tried to run across the parking lot to get further away. And uh, once I got to the other side, I looked back, and there was a gentleman wrestling with the gunman. There was a, a guy, and like I was telling earlier, I don't remember his name, but I told him before any of the police got there, I told him that he was a hero, because he was. It's often been said that the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. However, it's truly remarkable that sometimes even an unarmed man with enough resolve can have the courage to put his life in danger against an armed assailant. James Shaw Jr. is a true hero. However, gun control advocates such as Emma Gonzalez tried to claim that this now proves that good guys don't need to be armed, tweeting, Looks like you don't need to arm a teacher or a resource officer to stop a shooting. Oh! I get it, Emma. So, since one courageous unarmed man managed to stop a shooter at a Waffle House, we don't need to have good guys armed ever. Brilliant logic! Oh wait, four armed deputies at your school didn't stop the Parkland shooter. Are you saying that they would have if they had been unarmed? Maybe, just maybe, what's at issue here is competent and courageous guardians as opposed to cowardly ones. In celebrity news, Kanye West has blown the minds of liberals with a number of tweets in support of President Donald Trump. Kanye West's return to Twitter showcased support for President Trump, and that sparked a lot of criticism of Kanye. The rapper tweeted, quote, You don't have to agree with Trump, but the mob can't make me not love him. He also tweeted a photo wearing a Make America Great Again hat. Chance the rapper seemed to come to Kanye's defense, tweeting, quote, Black people don't have to be Democrats. He was criticized for that as well and later clarified the comment, saying he doesn't agree with Kanye and does not support the president. But all this has ignited a big debate about politics and race. I've never really cared for Kanye West, but he is indeed showing the left that they may be losing their ability to police the thinking of certain demographics that they thought they had in the bag forever saying, if you're black, you have to vote Democrat, might not work any longer. Isn't it interesting that if your ideas are good, you don't need to police thought. You just need to teach people how to think, and they'll come to the right conclusions. If you know your ideas are bunk, you have to deliberately try and keep people stupid, but thinking they're smart. Armed with an unhealthy bias of illusory superiority, these low-ability people cannot objectively evaluate their own mental shortcomings. In other words, they are too stupid to know how stupid they are. In For all those people out there singing the praises of the National Healthcare Service in Britain, take a second look. This week, the British government has ruled that hospital workers have the right to sentence young Alfie Evans to death even though his parents would seek further treatment in Italy if they were allowed. The NHS, the National Health Service in the United Kingdom, has won another legal battle, denying parents, Thomas Evans and Katie James, the right to give their dying child, 23-month-old Alfie Evans, a fighting chance at life. The court ruling yesterday that they cannot take their son to Italy for further treatment and that the United Kingdom hospital can remove the child's life support against the parents' wishes. Which That's the funny thing about universal health care. 
Folks like Bernie Sanders can claim that health care is a right of all people. Yet strangely, declaring this to be so somehow doesn't guarantee that all people get the health care they need. In fact, since there are a limited quantity of medical supplies and services, governments that provide health care end up getting to decide who is and isn't worth saving. Even if the patients in question would voluntarily choose to spend their own money to get further treatment. Do you really want the government to have unconditional control over who does and doesn't get treated, and by whom? Give it to me straight, Doc. How long do I have? Mr. Griffin, I'd say you have about a month to live. Yeah. But hey, what the hell do I know? <laughs> I've, been, I've been sued by every patient I ever had. <laughs> Look at the size of this file. This is... This <laughs> In a historic event, North and South Korea will be formally putting an end to the Korean War after 68 years. No North Korean leader has ever done it. Kim Jong-un stepping into South Korea with a handshake for its President Moon. And holding hands, the two stepped briefly into North Korea. Kim given an honor guard, the pageantry rich. The peace era starts now, said Kim, before signing an agreement confirming the goal of complete denuclearization, disarming by phases. No more war, they said. Of course, don't think this means that the North and the South are going to be best friends, or that capitalism will suddenly come to North Korea. Actually, it's not clear to me at the moment if anything will change fundamentally. This is undoubtedly a move on Kim Jong-un's part to ensure that he maintains control of North Korea. But hey, it does look like more is getting done with North Korea than has in the past three decades or so, so hey. In entertainment news, the film Avengers Infinity War released this week. Hard to believe that the Marvel Cinematic Universe began in 2008 with Iron Man 1, and has now produced perhaps the most comprehensive superhero team-up movie of all time. I saw the film this Thursday evening, and I've gotta say, it was quite simply, awesome. Avengers. I hope they remember you. I do hope those that survive remember everything. And now it's finally time to unveil the weekly hottie. Drum roll, please. This week's weekly hottie is YouTube model Jessica Sanders. She released a lounge underwear haul yesterday. Let's watch. Crop top to it now. So I would class these like as a gym set, but they're so freaking comfortable that I'd also probably live in these and wear them to bed. Showing you photos of me wearing them. So they'll probably be like up on the screen right now. So I'll put them over here. But it's just this really cute G string. And it sits nice and high waisted so it doesn't like cut you or anything like that. And you'll see in the photos like how flattering it is on it. Just as you'll see on, it is so nice. You can wear this to like a festival. You'll see on when I'm trying it on. I absolutely love it. I love the mesh look to it, the white, how high waisted they sit. They flatter seriously any body shape. You know. And that brings us to a close for this week. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, both on the Liberty Network and on my channel, My Two Cents. And that's My Two Cents. Take it for what it's worth.